right now. As for the New York Yankees, looking for their third straight win, it's the middle game of a three-game set at Yankee Stadium against the Oakland A's. Three comeback wins in their last five games. And, Bo, how do you explain that? Is it just another feather in the cap of baseball's best team? Well, you look at the Yankees. They can change the game with one swing. Offensively, you know they're going to score runs. But I'm going to go to their middle relief and their bullpen. When you think about teams that have comeback wins, it's about run prevention in the middle of the game when the starter may be out of the game in the fourth or in the fifth. And now that bullpen and Steve is able to come in and keep that game right there, which gives your high-powered offense an opportunity to make those comebacks. So when you look at the Yankees, yes, the back end of their bullpen have been lights out, but it's that middle relief that actually give them this opportunity to come back and win games. And these guys have done a tremendous job with their middle relief. It's also, you look at an Aaron Boone making decisions, even with the starter yesterday when he gave up five runs. Instead of going to get him and going to the bullpen, he extends them a little bit farther, which eats up a few more innings, gives that offense a chance to come back. So these guys have done a tremendous job in the bullpen. Castro King, these guys have been tremendous. Yeah, good bullpens don't just hold the lead. They hold the deficit because it then allows your offense to be able to come back. And, and this is a lineup that's relentless. It's a lineup that's circular. They're all the same guy. They can all get on base. They can all, all hit for average, all hit for power. And so they just keep playing the game. And so the Yankees just, you know, their bullpen comes in. They hold the deficit. The offense comes back. And now 23 come from behind wins. It's the best bullpen in baseball. Would you all agree with that? It is. Now, a lot of yes. injuries. I got some injuries they're dealing with. What, what are they going to do with Chapman? Come well, on. that's what I'm, I was about to get to. Well, it's ask a, the manager. It's, it's I don't know. It's the best bullpen. But this is the whole front office manager yes. relationship. I don't see how. Everyone's in love with Clay Holmes, and I, they should. But we've never seen a role as Chapman in any other role but closer. Why would we assume that he would take on the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning and be comfortable doing that when we've already seen Clay Holmes do that? I, 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 I'm leaning towards a role as Chapman comes back. He's still the closer of the New York Yankees. Well, it's a good problem to have as a manager. But the one thing I said about the Yankees a long time ago, this entire team has bought into winning a championship. So whatever role that Aaron Boone put Chapman in, I believe he's going to accept it because they're all in. They're all in on whatever's best for the team. If I'm in the lineup today, I'm going to do my job. If I'm out of the lineup, I'm going to be ready when the manager put me in. So it's a great problem to have for a manager when you have two late-inning guys. And you know what's even better? One's right-handed, one's left-handed. So you can have the, the, the ninth inning could be the close one night, but the eighth inning can be the close the next night. So you get to mix and match, and you can choose either one of them that you want to give a pocket to based on who you're playing. Now, wait a minute. But that sounds like no one cares about their role. So Oldest as Chapman won't have hurt feelings, you're just assuming because everyone's pulling on the right side of the rope. They're trying to win a chip. It's all about the chip. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. I get it. I think Chapman comes in and closes. Now, I might have him set up the first time just to get comfortable and everything else. Chapman becomes my closer. Holmes goes to the eighth inning or the seventh inning, wherever the game needs. Holmes becomes Josh Hader before he became a closer, where he's your weapon. Seventh inning, eighth inning, he High saves leverage. the game. And I just think Chapman, you know, the predictability, it's people who play the game, and they have feelings and emotions. And I don't know that Chapman would want the eighth inning. I think he's looking at it saying, injury's not going to keep me from my job. Chapman would close for me. Holmes would go to the eighth inning. Because if it falls apart, I can always move Holmes back. If Chapman falls apart... He may not be recoverable. I have a feeling. That York Metz is with us now. Welcome to the team. Uh, I've been a big fan of yours. Been on your radio show on Sirius XM. You do great work. We're thrilled to have you with us here. Well, glad to be here, and obviously familiar with a lot of the people here. Bo, good to be with you today. Great as to well, have you, manager, general manager, got a lot to talk about tonight. I know. I'm going to be the guy that just says wild things. I'm going to throw things against the wall. I've watched this show enough. Yeah, you realize. know how it yeah. works, and you'll just clean up the mess that I create. You see uh, Steve's resume. He is as locked in as any human being that's ever been on this set. And we've had some pretty locked in people. So when you watch a show like MLB Tonight and we say things that maybe aren't true, uh, are blatantly wrong, and do you find yourself yelling at the television? Uh, only at Plesak. <laughs> I, mean, really, I mean, he's really the only guy I do. Everybody yeah. else, I'm like, oh, it's okay. But those but DJ Plesak. Dan segments yeah. get out of hand. Yeah, they yeah do. especially when he start boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, you know, there's a, a series I thought was a huge series uh, in the AL Central. The Twins, a first place squad, taking on the Cleveland Guardians. I want to go there to start the show. Friend Neil Reyes in the first inning with two outs, pops it up a mile high. 
the Franable. I mean, that's a mile high. That, that is a mile high, and it was so high. That's no the right side to catch it. That's the right field. This ball all the way. I mean, I don't know if he lost it and didn't see it, but the right fielder has to come and get that baseball. Oh, that's painful. Meanwhile, Zach Lisak has found a groove, Steve. He has, and I'll tell you, the breaking stuff is there. Location of the fastball is there, and he is locked in. Very athletic on the mound. I love how he moves off the mound. He can cover his position, and he's attacking hitters. He made a defensive play a week ago that yeah, was still phenomenal. one of the best. Uh, six innings, seven Ks for him. Gilberto uh, Celestino is going to triple. Yes, that's a good job on the left field to get over there to back that up. But great hustle out of the box. Triples are made coming out of the box. We go to the eighth. Carlos Correa, uh, again, back to being a consistent performer. This is number nine. Wow. We got a man locked in. That's wow. a high. That's a high fastball. To get on top of a high fastball like that, you have to get extension. And Carlos drove that ball out of the ball. See, I thought the fan with the glove had full extension. He was going to catch that, but he was not locked in. No, not locked. E on the fan. Absolutely. In the eighth, this is up the middle and through. Ahmed Rosario with a knock. That's a tough call. There, second and third. You're up. You're, you're down by one, and you play the infill in. I know they have Ramirez on deck, but that's a really tough call to play the infill in and give up both of those runs. In the ninth, Emmanuel Classe against Luis Arise. Oh, my. 101. Game over. Tough guy to strike out, too, but 101 up in the zone. Arise, pretty good hitter. You take away his first week of the regular season. Emmanuel Classe has been the best closer in baseball since that point. He's been yes. untouchable. He's been lights out. 3-2, the final score, uh, an important series because uh, this is one of five games. Now, the Twins won the first one. was a blowout, 11-1. So this is game one of a doubleheader tonight. A five-game series. And if you're the Guardians, you're thinking to yourself, oh, this is a great opportunity. But after last night, you get blown out by the Twins. You're thinking, we better regroup because if we get run through, we could be what, six, seven games out of first place. An important series early on before the All-Star break. Oh, no question. Plus, a lot of emotions for the Twins. Wes Johnson, the pitching coach, his final series with the team. He's leaving to LSU. And so, you know, you look at them right now, they've got a lot going on. Sonny Gray said yesterday, he said, I hated him for a lot yesterday, and I was happy for him a lot yesterday because of his making the decision for a family to leave the team. Big series, no question about it. These two teams going to be evenly matched. I don't love Minnesota's pitching. I don't love Cleveland's hitting, and so it's a matter of, look, I'm, therefore I'll take the team with the better pitching over the team with the better hitting, which may leave the door open for the White Sox at some point later in the year. Mm, that's interesting, but losing your pitching coach, because I think everyone that follows the game agrees with you. The Twins have been smoking mirrors from the rotation standpoint. Chris Archer doesn't go deep in games, but he's been very good when he's on the mound. Sonny Gray's been as good as ever before. Uh, Joe Ryan's been a pleasant surprise as a rookie who gets the ball on opening day. To have your pitching coach, who's helped this reclamation rotation be as good as they've been leave I'm a bit worried for the Minnesota Twins aren't you yes I'm, I'm definitely worried when I'm, I'm going to go back to the eighth inning and the decision to play the infield in you win the game last night and I felt like Minnesota felt like they were playing with house money and they played the infield in in that situation trying to play for the win instead of playing for the tie and put themselves in a situation where maybe they can extend that game. I know they had Ramirez on deck, but I was always a big advocate with second and third. I'm playing the infield back. I'm going to give up one. I'm not going to give up two. Mm. Or I'm going to go ahead and intentionally walk them, and I'm going to play for the double play. Have you ever managed with house money before like that? Yes, you have. Because you, it's a situation where, let's say it's a four-game series. You've already won three. And now you're saying to yourself, I don't want to burn my bullpen. I don't want to play extra innings. And it could have, the, the, the fact that they're playing a day night doubleheader could have played into that decision as well. That's I've never had house money ever. <laughs> never. I've never had it. I don't, know what it. I don't know what it looks like. You had other people's money that <laughs> yeah, you spent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe that could be house Cliff money. Cliff Floyd, Al Leiter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we know some of those. Uh, again, 3 2, the final score. Cleveland gets to win. Time now for our first pitch. Beautiful day, just about set to get underway. Here's the first pitch. First pitch. First pitch of the ball game. First pitch. First pitch of the ball game. Let's do it. Astros Mets. Pete Alonzo is working his way into MVP consideration. Look at his numbers in the last 14 games. He's more than just a master, Steve. Oh, he's a good hitter, too. Now, it's going to be tough on him. Framber Valdez on the mound and try to get one of those sinker balls and lift it. A real challenge for Alonzo in this matchup tonight. Most RBIs before July in Mets history. You see where Alonzo stacks up over Hall of Famer like Mike Piazza, David Wright, more Pete Alonzo. He is really off to a tremendous start to his career. And look, I think it's a big deal. I don't care if Paul Goldschmidt keeps rolling and he's a runaway NL MVP. To be a finalist is a